Live televised football in Britain was introduced tentatively. The FA Cup final had been broadcast live since 1953, but league games only began to be broadcast regularly in the 83-84 season, with experimental transmissions on ITV on the occasional Friday evening. The number of matches were restricted for two reasons. Firstly, in response to the game's fears that overexposure would reduce attendances, and secondly, because of the broadcaster's need to schedule matches for peak audiences. Nevertheless, it began a quick rise in the value of televised football. While that first two-year contract was acquired for £5.2 million, within five years a broadcaster would pay roughly £11 million per season for exclusivity. And it's important to understand how those rights are calculated. They are split geographically, with a valuation determined by 1. the size and purchasing power in the viewing market, 2. the popularity of the sport among the general audience, and 3. by the level of competition in the supply side. Now, there were two key reasons for that first 1980s boom. Firstly, the relationship between television and football was symbiotic. Football benefited from increased exposure, leading to increased commercial opportunities, while television benefited from having organic entertainment with few production costs. Secondly, while football had originally been vending its rights packages in a marketplace occupied by two inhabitants, the BBC and ITV, the introduction and growth of pay television in the UK brought competition between broadcasters, driving the price of English football's content up. From 1983 to 1986, however, the BBC and ITV were the sole broadcasters of football in the UK. In 1988, however, British Satellite Broadcasting BSB, introduced itself as a competitor, promising a more lucrative offer. As a result, a round of competitive negotiations were held, with ITV securing an exclusive four-year deal at a cost of £44 million. In 1990, BSB merged with the similarly ambitious pay TV company Sky Television PLC to form British Sky Broadcasting BSkyB. And in 1992, Sky bought the exclusive live rights to the newly formed Premier League for £191 million, while the BBC reacquired the rights for recorded highlights to be shown on Match of the Day, outbidding ITV by £49 million. The football media relationship in the UK was budding and started to show that it could be a big money business. Sky's second Premier League deal in 1997, which ran for four years, cost £670 million, over three and a half times more than their previous deal. In relative terms, however, certainly in comparison to the most recent £5.1 billion broadcasting contract, the costs of the rights packages remained relatively low, signposting investors towards the market and encouraging them to take risks for the potential of substantial rewards. In 1998, a pay TV service called On Digital was launched. The project was jointly owned by Carlton Communications and Granada PLC, two franchises of the ITV network. Their targets were to be the primary competitors to Rupert Murdoch's Sky Digital and to have 2 million subscribers by 2003. The plan, however, did not get off to the best start. Sky's aggressive marketing made On Digital look unattractive, with the former acquiring 350,000 subscribers by April 1999, while the latter dragged behind with just 110,000. Later, Carlton and Granada would reveal that one in four subscribers quit the service within the first three months, slowing On Digital's growth to a snail's pace. Going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Sky was always going to be a war of attrition, and while both companies started to offer their boxes and satellite dishes for free in an attempt to undercut the other, Sky were better built to absorb those losses, thanks to a history of profits and a larger existing customer base. On Digital attempted to play their one trump card, attaching itself to the ITV brand, acclaimed as the most powerful in British commercial television by executives in an effort to drag itself under its new identity, ITV Digital, towards profitability. In further attempts to mimic Sky's business model, ITV Digital decided to muscle in on the growing football industry while it was still relatively cheap. In the year 2000, they paid an astronomical £315 million for exclusive rights to the Football League meaning the Championship, League One, League Two, and the Worthington, or now Carabao Cup, grossly overestimating the value of the content. 
Expectations that the company could keep up with Sky's metrics through showing the muddy need Football League in direct contrast to the more glamorous Premier League were deeply flawed. By October 2001, ITV Digital had just 1.3 million subscribers compared to Sky's 5.7 million. In fact, during the 2001-2 season, there were reportedly matches during which ITV Digital's audience barely exceeded the official attendance total. By 2002, rumours emerged that ITV Digital were losing £1 million per day. Behind closed doors, the company reportedly held desperate talks with the Football League to renegotiate the £315 million deal. They were bleeding hundreds of subscribers to Sky on a daily basis and, in a last effort to save the project, tried to negotiate a £130 million cut to their TV rights deal. The Football League, now increasingly concerned by the situation, rejected the negotiation on the basis that many of their clubs had already offered contracts to players based on the expected shared income of £105 million per season. But then, in March 2002, ITV Digital was placed into administration. By October, the company was liquidated. But Sky, ever the opportunists, picked up the Football League rights from 2002 to 2006 for £95 million, a snip in comparison to what ITV Digital had paid. The knock-on effects were seismic and continue to be felt today. The collapse left £178.5 million owed to Football League clubs at a time when loss-making in English football was already chronic. Furthermore, Sky's deal saw the Football League clubs make £75 million less per season than they had anticipated. Between 1992 and 2014, 58 clubs underwent insolvency proceedings at an average of 2.63 per year. In 2002 and 2003 alone, 16 clubs entered administration. In 2012, former Barnsley chairman John Dennis recalled the harrowing experience. Barnsley were regarded by most of our peers as a prudently run, sensible football club. In my time as chairman, we made a profit, 12 out of 13 years, and the exception was the year that we went into administration. We were accused of being profligate for committing money that we hadn't received, but I've no sympathy for that point of view. It was perfectly reasonable to assume the terms of a properly negotiated contract with a properly constituted company would be honoured. Within two months of the ITV digital deal collapsing, so had the transfer market outside the higher echelons of English football. Now, if ITV Digital's business plan was careless, then the football leagues were completely negligent. The Football League sued ITV Digital's owners, Carlton and Granada, for failing to guarantee the contracted income, but the High Court Mr Justice Langley ruled that ITV Digital's owners were under no legal obligation to honour their collapsed subsidiaries' debts. Possibly out of embarrassment and frustration, the Football League then filed a £150 million negligence claim against its legal firm, Ed Jellison, now known as Hammonds LLP, for failing in its duty to protect the League's commercial interests by seeking guarantees during negotiations with ITV Digital. Of the £150 million claimed, the High Court's Mr Justice Rimmer found only two breaches of duty for which he awarded just £4, stating that the League knew about the risks. The suit, which went on for four years, cost approximately £5 million in legal fees. So, what can be learnt from ITV Digital and its effect on football clubs? Well, primarily, that bidding for sports rights can be particularly risky if overvalued. Perhaps more ominously, ITV Digital's crash demonstrated the interdependence between the sport and media industries. If one falls, the other will face serious repercussions.